I've got an awesome video for you. I'm gonna teach you exactly the pro's pitching technique so that you can get those amazing shots around the green. Now, I'm gonna teach you a lot of technical detail in here. It's gonna teach you just to do it just like the pros, but there's one thing, you can do all those pieces of technique right. If you don't get this right, you're never gonna get the good quality, consistency and solid strikes like you want. You're gonna have those chunks and thins that go in there. All right, so let's jump right into the technique here. The first thing is, when I'm hitting a pitch shot, I want my body to rotate through this shot. And a big mistake I see is players setting up with their feet square like this. So when my feet are square, I feel like I'm kind of hitting my arms across my body. It's not as easy to rotate through. In fact, when I start to do that a little bit and rotate the way I'm supposed to, I naturally start to cheat with my feet open. If you want to pitch like the pros, what they're doing is they're taking this lead foot and they're opening it about 30 to 45 degrees. So this is square, putting it up here. The right foot is also turned forward probably 15, 20 degrees this way. Now, if I'm looking at my ball position, you can see if I drew a line from there, that would be on my left heel. It would also be on my right toe. This is why there's so much confusion about ball position. Do I play it on my front foot? Do I play it on my back foot? Well, I'm playing it on both feet right now. It's on my back toe and my lead heel because my feet are close together and they're angled forward a little bit. So that's why you hear so many different people saying different things. This should be about how you want to set up. Now from there, what I don't want to do, it actually throws a wrench in everything, is I don't want to get my shirt buttons behind the golf ball. You see in the full swing, when I get behind the golf ball, that allows me to get a ton of lag, release that club in front, and I get speed, lots of speed. When I'm making a full swing, I want the ball to be hit hard, I want it to go a long way. With short game, I don't want it to be hit hard. I actually want it to be very soft and take all the power out of it so that if I do hit it a little too hard or a little too short, it basically goes the same distance. Now, what I'm gonna do to make that happen is I'm gonna keep my shirt buttons over top of the golf ball or just slightly in front. So if I was to hang this club down from my shirt buttons here, if I stood right over top of this golf ball, this would be directly over the golf ball. I'm actually gonna have a little more weight on my left just barely a little more weight on my left until that would hit about an inch in front of the golf ball. That's how you want it to feel the entire short game, anytime you're doing short game, especially when you're pitching. So from there, my feet are open, my shirt buttons are in front, and then finally, here's the big piece, I wanna make sure that as I go back and through, I don't get armsy and kinda of start jabbing at it. So I'm gonna go ahead, almost like a pendulum, I'm gonna let my left arm swing and kinda of hit a low point and hit the ground at the same point each time. And then from there, I'm gonna to start to rotate my body on top of that. So I'm doing a pendulum, plus I'm rotating my body back and through, and you can see as that sinks up, I feel completely effortless. I feel like I could sit here and hit the exact same spot on the ground every single time. I'm not manipulating the club at all. I'm just rotating back and through, almost as if I was gonna to toss a golf ball toward the screen and I'm letting my arms swing as I'm doing that. That gets you a ton of consistency. So let's go ahead and try one out here, and you'll notice how this is really smooth in the transition and the follow through. So feet open, chest in front. We're gonna hit a little mini shot here. There we go, couldn't get much better than that. Nice little one foot draw on there. So nice and smooth tempo, hit that really, really clean. Now, there's a great training aid that can help you get this feeling. It's called the Orange Whip Wedge. So this is a, not the normal Orange Whip, it's got a wedge head on it, and it's got this real whippy, flimsy, almost like rubber shaft that you use. The cool thing about this is, if I start jerking the club at all, this is the piece you have to get right. I just talked about that pendulum swinging, and then my body rotating. So that creates a little effortless momentum to where I can just rotate back and through and you notice even with one arm, that club is hitting the same spot on the ground every single time. The destroyer of this is taking my hands and arms and getting quick in the backswing and quick in the transition, and now all of a sudden nothing's working together. So you imagine if I took my hands and arms and I started to flick my wrist back, that club starts to bend like this as it gets started, and then if I get quick in my transition, the club bends like this, and if I kind of stop my body rotation, and kind of jerk at the end, the club bends the other way. So the cool thing about this club is, I wanna make this little pitch shot swing by using the momentum of my body, and if I do that, I wanna feel like this club hardly ever bends at all. So very smooth takeaway, very smooth transition. So what I'm wanting to have happen 
as I'm slowing down, starting the transition, I almost want gravity to let this club start to fall rather than me trying to manipulate it. And as it starts to fall, I'm gonna make my finish and I wanna rotate on through so smoothly that the club never comes to an abrupt halt here. If I was to stop my body, it would go something more like that and it would really kick back up. So I'm really feeling like I rotate on through and it's so smooth here that there's no bend in the shaft here. So the start, the transition, and the finish, if I rotate and do that pivot correctly, I don't get the club whipping around all over the place. Let's go ahead and try another one out here. So I'm just gonna keep my, my momentum, my pivot. Let's see if we can hit a nice clean one. There we go, not gonna get a whole lot better than that. And it's almost identical to my first shot where I feel like nice solid contact and I feel like I could hit 100 in a row and never have to worry about chunking them or thinning them or anything like that. So Orange Whip gave us a special deal. I have a link down below in the description. If you click that link and purchase from Orange Whip, we get a few bucks, helps us support the channel, make more great content like this. And this is really just an awesome training aid here. So I highly recommend if you're struggling with your pitching and getting that tempo right, this is the best tempo trainer, the best wedge trainer that I've found to really get that down and hit clean shot after clean shot. Now you don't have to have one of these things. If you just wanna use your normal club and have the exact same feelings that we talked about just there, that's completely fine too. You can do that with a normal wedge. It just is a little bit easier if you have the whippy shaft wedge. You might learn it a little bit quicker if you do that. All right, so what everybody's wanting to know, what's my rating? What's the top speed golf score of this whippy club? Well, this is a little bit of a unique one. I think if you're just doing normal full swing and I'm trying to improve my swing overall, it's okay. It can maybe smooth you out a little bit. The one of the things I don't like about it is it's a little bit heavier. And when you have a heavier club like this, it tends to slow you down. So even if you're smoother, you're not very fast. So when we're talking full swing and you wanna have distance, you wanna have power, it's not gonna be fantastic for that. When we're talking about short game and we just wanna smooth out, we don't want any power at all, it's really, really good for that. I also like how it's so bendy that it just automatically makes you sync things up. If you don't have things synced up, you know right away that it's off track. So it should feel like everything's just perfectly smooth, the shaft isn't bending around all over the place, and I think it's really solid for that. So for the purposes of short game, I think this is absolutely one of the best ever. And when I use, use this with players that I don't even tell them the right technique, I just hand it to them, I say make a few swings, they automatically start using the technique that I see all great players using, which is pivoting back and through, getting the flow of the club. So for short game, I give it a really high score. I'm gonna give this a 9.2 for short game. If you're looking for an overall training aid that's gonna help your full swing, that's gonna help you gain distance and power, I'd rate it really low on that. So if, you're, if your short game's great, I wouldn't buy this one at all. If your short game is not quite where you want it to be, I think you'd be nuts not to purchase one of these. So 9.2, that's my rating for the short game for the, for the Orange Whip Wedge. It's a pretty daggone good training aid. Now, there's another problem here. Most of the time when I see players do this, they don't hit the type of shot that I just hit there, which is pretty square. What ends up happening a lot of times is players are never used to getting this forward shaft lane. So when I hit that shot, as I came through contact, my hands were leading the way. And if you imagine that this is a square club face and I go ahead and put my hands in front, look how that opens the face. So basically if this is square, if I keep my wrist flat and I put my hands in front, the face opens more and more and more. I actually have to bow my wrist to square that club face up. So this is what the pros are doing. You're seeing all the great ball strikers, iron players, they're getting the hands in front and rotating those wrists to square it up. And I've actually found that this orange whip wedge really exaggerates that because if I don't square that club face up, it even goes more to the right because it has that whippy shaft. So if I just drag my hands in front and don't square it up like the pros, it shoots off to the right like that. That was bad tempo and that was the club bending around all over the place. That was my hands never squaring up the way they're supposed to. Now, I'm gonna play a bonus video for you, something I call the anti-roll method. And I wanna walk through the right way to square up the club face. See, we've been taught to square up the club face by rolling the hands over each other, which causes you to leave those shots to the right, to add too much loft to it, and even worse than that, get a little bit steep in the downswing. In this bonus, I'm gonna show you the right way to square this wedge up, square all your clubs up, 
so that you can hit it consistently straight, nice, tight little draws. So go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere on your screen. If you don't see one of those cards pop up, just go ahead and click the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video and you're gonna start using your wrist and you're, you're gonna start squaring up the face just like the pros do, all the pros do. You're gonna start hitting it fantastic. Best of luck and I can't wait to see you in the anti-roll method. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,